Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host John Troyer, and this is theCUBE's fourth year of coverage of KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. We're here in San Diego and happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Amr Abdahalam, who is the head of cloud platforms at Fidelity Investments. Of course, uh, Fidelity, we love talking to an end user, big financial company. Your boss was up on the main stage uh, in front of 8,000 people. That's uh, right. Just in that room, there's over 12,000 here in person. Um, Fidelity itself, uh, you know, founded in 1946, first computers in 1965. Uh, in the last year, you've now got over 500 applications running in the public cloud, and Fidelity also joined the CNCF. So let, let's start there, Amr, if we would. Sure. Uh, just kind of, how does Fidelity look at uh, kind of Kubernetes and the CNCF? How does that fit into, you know, your company's mission? Absolutely, I mean, thank you so much for inviting me here. Um, uh, innovation in Fidelity is, is, uh, is like, big part of the process. Uh, um, like we're very focused at this time in, in uh, cloud computing, in machine learning, in AI technology. Uh, we had the first like financial robo in 2015, I believe. Uh, we have the first augmented reality financial advisor was actually like released uh, this year uh, as a prototype. So a uh, part of that innovation, we're seeing like, you know, CNCF and the cloud computing and cloud native is, is the key keys like for strategy for our innovation part. All right, uh, may maybe if you could, give us a little bit of kind of the, the, the breadth and depth of your team, what they cover, uh, you know, what you, cloud platforms, what, what does that mean inside of Fidelity? Sure, so Fidelity had over like, um, over 10,000 of IT, uh, like hundreds and hundreds of DevOps teams, thousands of applications, it's globally distributed, um, it had all kind of workloads that you can imagine, and it's running in very high regulated environment as well, and that's what we're seeing that we, we're always looking for this autonomy between teams and agility and improved time to market and customer experience. Um, and the, the, the key for that is cloud native. We're seeing Kubernetes and CNCF and the cloud native technology is like a key player for us when we go like multi-cloud, hybrid cloud model. Can you talk a little bit about uh, more into that portfolio of technologies? Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about public cloud versus on-prem, and, and as if one thing is going to, you know, one knife is going to be the only thing you need in your kitchen. Right. So um, you have a portfolio of platforms, you have a portfolio of, of destinations, and a, and a portfolio of applications. Can you talk a little bit about both about what you're using and maybe how you're organized to to access and uh, address all those needs? Absolutely. So um, uh, I think, you know. Um, 2019, I would say, it's a year of multi-cloud, hyper-cloud modeling, right? Actually, I would say that 2020 is more, going to be more about distributed cloud, where you can distribute your workload across multi-cloud providers. We're not there yet. I don't think where anyone is there yet, but at least we should start like somewhere where you have this multi-cloud providing. Uh, distributing the workload itself uh, between, uh, I mean, it's journey to move like thousands of applications and thousands of workload and data as well uh, between like on-premises data centers, to a public cloud, you will need to move through this journey of hybrid cloud models and be able to move apps like slowly and gracefully to other apps. All right, uh, Amr, I want to dig into the, what you talked about there, multi-cloud. Sure. So, you know, when you talk about multiple clouds, yes, everybody has that. I've got, yeah. you, 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 walk us through a little bit, you know, where you have workloads and how many public clouds you use and like, but I want to set you up with, with a premise. You know, we've really said, for multi-cloud to really be a reality, right. the value that you extract should be greater than the sum of its parts. Right. And most of us live through the multi-vendor years, right. and that wasn't necessarily you know, happiness and joy when I had to span between those environments. So you know, how do we make sure that multi-cloud doesn't become the least common denominator or a, a detriment uh, to uh, what I need to do with my data, my applications, the value that the company and, and has? And that's why we were here. We're yeah. here actually in Kubernetes and KubeCon for that reason. That where you see this abstract layer that guarantee you the portability of moving your application from one cloud provider to another, right? Uh, the capability of like ability to deploy the same workload into multi-cloud, the ability to have um, the workload itself um, uh, managed in different like characteristic next to like SaaS services that you will find in AWS via Azure, via Google Cloud, via others, right? That's where you need that you know, flexibility and Kubernetes and cloud native itself 
uh, the ability to have the same deployable construct for your application, the ability to have the same ecosystem around that construct and around that artifacts, mm -hmm. the ability to move all of that as is from one cloud provider to another cloud provider is big, big key. Okay. And that's you can only find with Kubernetes. Right. Uh, Amari, are you, can you share like which cloud or clouds you're working on today and what, what is your roadmap to, uh, you know, do you have a, 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 a kind of timeline to when that vision becomes reality? I mean, uh, at this moment, we're like we're with a major like cloud provider keys that you guys can name them. Yeah, all the colors. It, uh, you're yeah. using all of them. Okay. All the colors. Okay. Know. And how uh, are you using Kubernetes today? Where are you in that journey? So Kubernetes is mainly. I mean, um, I would say the majority is running, is still running on premise. Uh, we're like very intensively moving to public cloud in the Kubernetes side. Uh, at this moment, actually, we're building uh, an offer inside my team, which is a cloud platform team that offer will guarantee that portability between all the cloud provider. So for the development team to import our platform, uh, it will be kind of seamless for them. Where is it going to land? Is it going to be landing in AWS or Azure or on-premise? Okay, um, joining the CNCF as, as, as a member, bring, bring us inside, you know, I understand the journey. Are there any specific goals you have? How, how do you measure uh, kind of the investment and uh, you know, what you're hoping to uh, both as a company as well as part of the community uh, get out sure. of it. So uh, we have like you know, a big hope right now in, in open source our project, our little project about multi-clouding. And our focus is mainly about like the high regulation part, the high regulated part. Uh, we're very focused on compliance and security. Uh, and that's where we can, I think, we can contribute back to the open source community around that. So, Amar, you talked about, uh, you know, we talked about the platforms here in Kubernetes, but that goes hand in hand with the culture and the, and the upskilling and the, and the organization and the processes. Right. So, what intrigued me is you said, well, we, we, put some th we put things on Kubernetes on-prem, and then we're, and you know, and some things in the cloud, but then we're going to move some of those apps over time, we'll, we'll move to other appropriate homes. So that implies that you've, you've changed process and you've changed org, maybe, to, to be able to build cloud-native apps and that was actually separate, in some cases, from being in the public cloud. Right. Is that the, can you talk a little bit about how you've approached, I mean, from the perspective of people who are listening or watching who are, uh, you know, IT admins, and wondering how a, how a, 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 a comp, you know, a major organization like, you know, the, right. your org, you know, gets there. Right, and, and this is a main challenge. The challenge is not in the technology side itself, or the tools. Uh, I think the maturity is there in the, in the ecosystem at this moment. The challenge is mainly like building this culture inside teams. Uh, so uh, we're building like you know many like star points or COEs across all of our business unit and our, all of our teams, uh, and again like to build this culture across 10,000 developer plus, that's a measure. Like, yeah, and it's and funny because sometimes people go, well, COE is a dirty word, right? Don't right. do a COE, but you had multiple COEs distributed across. So it's like nuclear reaction. Yeah. Like our COE is the first one that will communicate with few COEs. Each one of them will be with other COEs, and that's how that that chain will will go and expand like quickly. Mm -hmm. All right. And this is happening at this moment. So, Amr, uh, I, I have a few friends that this is the first time that they've come. Um, right. And they go into the keynote, or they look at the schedule, and they're a bit overwhelmed. Right. Uh, they say, you know, it's not just Kubernetes, there's, you know, dozens and dozens of projects. Uh, the ecosystem is sprawling. Uh, if you could, give us a little walkthrough as to the, the, the projects you're using, any key partners uh, that, that you're allowed to talk about uh, that, that are useful in helping uh, you, you to achieve your mission. So, uh, uh, so we're, we're very focused at, at this moment actually in the Kubernetes project itself. Uh, we start exploring some of the open source project and in the CI/CD uh, part. Uh, in addition to that, we're starting using like few fr frameworks like Flux. Uh, this is one of the frameworks like GitOps in, in general, around like you know building this culture of GitOps deployment and moving toward like no ops of deployment. That's one of the areas that we're very invested in. Uh, we're exploring service mesh at this time. Uh, and I hope, like you know, we're gonna get like there. Maybe next year we can talk about service mesh more. Yeah, are, are there is there something that's holding you back on service mesh? Because there's a few options out there and right. various maturity levels, and you know who, who's driving them. But uh, what, what, what 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 will some of your kind of criteria it, as, uh, be? I, I will. I would. I would say it's mainly like you know, um, I, I'm I'm waiting like a little bit more. I feel like two for two fourteen for me. When we had uh, that discussion, if we were sitting here two fourteen, you would be discussing. And Mesos via Kubernetes via Swarm, right? So I think we're still moment uh, at this time at, at, at service mesh as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, any any partners that you can speak to from a technology standpoint that are helping you uh, that, that you're allowed to talk about? Or well, I mean, uh, first of all, CNCF. Yeah. I agree, agree. Yeah, appreciate you know their help in that. Um, uh, most of the public provi you know, cloud providers are helping us in these areas as well. Um, yeah. 
It's, it's really, I'll be interested in, in catching you after the show and, and sure. seeing how you thought. I mean, this is, a, this in some ways, was a science project a few years ago and, and now is this robust thing. Did you bring, I'm curious, did you bring um, mostly engineers, mostly managers, a mix of the two? What's uh, the? Mostly engineers. Yeah? Yeah, mostly engineers. Here? Hands on, get, get, uh, get the get old hands on. I mean, yeah. this is like another change in culture right now where most of our engineers are like the next generation, uh, with our full stack engineers. Uh, uh, where we're using very agile process at this moment to move forward. Uh, all our like, roadmaps internally is being published. It's being used like, like you know, uh, a voting process to go like with continuous uh, deployment and continuous like you know, feature enhancement for the teams. So it's it's, it's fantastic, honestly. Yeah. Okay, uh, Amr, uh, you know, what what things does your team hope to uh, hope to achieve this week? Uh, anything that uh, is on your roadmap or on the public open source roadmap that you're um, waiting on? We we're definitely exploring OPA mesh. at this okay. moment. I think that's on a, that's a big like you know potential there. So that's one of the area. Uh, I think you know going through the, the showroom and try to see what's what's option we have as well. That's another area where we're going to be very really interested at. Well, OPA, the, the policy agent, I mean, you talked about compliance before. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, with a folks in the financial industry, you would have some arguments, some discussions, some sometimes heated discussions about right. security in the cloud, and et cetera, and a highly regulated industry, yet kind of maybe ironically or somewhat maybe surprisingly for some, right, very advanced in many yeah. areas, the, the whole industry. Right. That's well known if you're in it. Uh, do you still have to have discussions about compliance and security in the cloud? I, maybe, I guess maybe when and you talk about data locality and international borders more. Right. And that's what, we already have our own policy management like, you know, tool, like, which is built in. We build it ourselves. And that's where I see the potential, like uh, moving from building it yourself to more of like using an open source mm -hmm. project and try to, to reuse it and contribute back to that open source community, like something like OBA, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's like the next generation where I see it will help us as well. All right, uh, Amar, any advice you'd give to your peers out there if they're new to the community, uh, things you've learned uh, along the journey so far? Uh, I would say like start small, uh, don't boil the ocean. Uh, start with small COEs, small pilots pro program. Uh, look for success, look for goals. Um, uh, technology is great, but that don't just like move toward technology because it's keep moving target, it will never end. Try to set like business goals for you and business like targets for your projects, and that's how you're going to achieve success. Well, Amr, really appreciate you sharing Fidelity's updates. Thank you. Uh, wish you and your team uh, the best of luck uh, here at the show and beyond, and we we'll definitely hope to catch up soon. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, uh, for John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. Be sure to check out thecube.net for all of the coverage of this, as well as all the cloud, cloud native, uh, and more shows that we have. Thank you for watching theCUBE.